recent weed management field day near Clay Center, we spoke with UNL Extension Weed Specialist Amit Jala. If you look across your land now and see your weed management program has provided clean fields, Amit says you should do something different next year. Earlier in June, UNL confirmed yet another resistance issue within the state. The latest addition is the resistance of common ragweed to glyphosate. The problem has previously been reported in 14 other states, most often in soybeans. Nebraska's confirmed population survived doses up to eight times the labeled rate. Because of how hard it's becoming for farmers to handle weeds after crops grow, we started our interview with Amit talking about why pre-emergence control is so important. Pre-emergence uh, herbicides are especially important in soybeans uh, because uh, in soybeans, uh, effective post-emergence herbicides are very limited and uh, pre-emergence herbicides are more in soybeans and also considering the issues of uh, herbicide resistant weeds and the way new weed species are developing resistant, uh, I think uh, to go for pre-emergence application is getting more and more important. How much more challenging is it to control those weeds post-emergence? It will be really challenging in case of certain weed species, uh, for example, common water hemp that uh, we already have is glyphosate resistant, uh, plus uh, most of the common water hemp uh, that we have tested from different 10 counties, uh, they were also resistant to ALS group of herbicides, like those pursuit and those brands that have been used for the last many years. So now, if you think about only post-emergence uh, control options in soybeans, we do have only PPO inhibiting herbicides like uh, Cobra, um, Ultra Blazer, Flagstar, but um, in Illinois, my colleague, uh, they have reported uh, common water hemp uh, that is resistant to glyphosate, that is resistant to LS group of herbicides, and that is also resistant to PPO inhibiting herbicides. So in that case, we really do not have any option to control that particular multiple herbicide resistant common water hemp uh, um, in soybean, especially with only post-emergence uh, herbicide application in Roundup Ready soybean. And you noted today it can be, you know, a couple feet tall right now, or it can still emerge in August. Right, so that is the problem to deal with common water hemp is, uh, it is just uh, keep emerging throughout the growing season. Like you will see some tall six foot, six inch tall water hemp plant right now. And uh, you will also see a new seedling of common water hemp is emerging nearby. So that's why it can easily escape uh, post-emergence herbicide application and so now my recommendation for that is there are a number of uh, herbicides uh, in soybean that are registered you can also they are residual herbicides that can be applied pre-emergence but they, they are also registered for post-emergence application so I would suggest to include any of those uh, residual herbicides in a tank mix with post-emergence herbicide that might be uh, appropriate way to provide some more residual activity, especially for those uh, water hemp and velvet leaf uh, that are emerging later in the season. Talking with some UNL people around the state, it seems like volunteer corn is a big problem in soybean fields this year. How limiting could that be to soybean yield and uh, what's the solution to it? We have a project uh, supported by USDA where we are uh, trying to get the answer like up to what density it may create uh, yield penalty in soybean and in some cases uh, yes we have seen some yield reduction due to volunteer corn density in soybeans so it is a challenging and if you will drive across nebraska you will see several soybean fields that are infested with uh, volunteer corn and it is again due to repeated uh, use of uh, glyphosate resistant corn and soybeans in rotation so I think um, there are a number of uh, herbicide options available in soybean, but the key is you need to control volunteer corn when they are at or below 10 inch tall. One of the things you said today was uh, the modes of action that we have right now are probably what we're going to have for the next few years because it's so expensive to develop new modes of action. What does that mean for the farmer? Uh, that means uh, those days were gone where they were depending on only post-emergence application of herbicides uh, and I think now growers need to think about their herbicide program, try to incorporate uh, residual herbicides uh, with multiple modes of actions. Like in last few years, there are several new herbicides came to the market. Uh, they were not a brand new herbicide chemistries, but uh, they were tank mixture of already existing herbicides, but they were 
they can provide uh, different mode of action and that might be effective for control of uh, herbicide resistant weeds as well as some other weed species that are hard to control. You said the take home message today is if your weed control program worked well this year, it's time to change it next year. Yes, and that is still, I would stick with that uh, because uh, if you will keep using the same herbicides, doesn't matter if it is residual or post-emergence or any herbicide, it will evolve herbicide resistant weeds if it will be used repeatedly for few years. So the best message will be just uh, keep rotating your herbicide program and remember that if your herbicide program is working excellent this year, you still need to come up with uh, some other herbicide options next year and try to make ABC3, ABCD like four or five herbicide programs and that may include different herbicide programs.